Hi boys and girls, continuing with Charlotte's Web, I'm going to begin by reading chapter 19, and this is called The Egg Sack. The next morning when the first light came into the sky, Wilbur awoke and looked for Charlotte. He saw her up overhead in a corner near the back of his pen. She was very quiet. She seemed to have shrunk during the night. Next to her, attached to the ceiling, Wilbur saw a curious object. It was sort of a sack or a cocoon. It was peach colored and looked as though as if it were made of cotton candy. Are you awake, Charlotte? He said softly. Yes, she said. What is that nifty little thing? Did you make it? I did indeed, replied Charlotte. Is it a plaything? asked Wilbur. Plaything? I should say not. It is my egg sack, my magnum opius. Wilbur said, I don't know what a magnum opius is. Charlotte explained. She said, that's Latin. It means great work. This egg sack is my great work, the finest thing I have ever made. What's inside of it? He asked. Are there eggs? 514 eggs, she said. 514, shouted Wilbur. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I counted them, she said. I got started counting, so I kept on, just to keep my mind occupied. Wilbur then said, it's a perfectly beautiful egg sack, and he was feeling as happy as if though he had made it himself. Charlotte replied, yes, it is pretty. Anyway, I can guarantee it is really strong. It's made out of the toughest material I have, and it's also waterproof. The eggs are inside and they will be warm and dry. Charlotte, said Wilbur dreamily, are you really going to have 514 children? Yes, if nothing happens, she said. Of course, they won't show up though until next spring. And Wilbur noticed that Charlotte's voice sounded sad. What makes you sound so sad? I should think you'd be terribly happy about it, he said. Oh, don't pay any attention to me, said Charlotte. I just don't have any pep anymore. I guess I feel, I feel sad because I won't ever get to see my children. What do you mean you won't get to see your children? Of course you will. We will all see them. It's going to be simply wonderful next spring in the barn with 514 baby spiders all running around and the geese will have a new set of gosling and the sheep will have their new lambs and maybe, said Charlotte quietly. However, I have a feeling I'm not going to see the results of last night's efforts. I don't feel good at all. I think I'm languishing, to tell you the truth. Wilbur didn't understand what the word languish meant, and he hated to bother Charlotte to ask her to explain, but he was so worried he felt he had to ask. What does languishing mean? Charlotte said, it means I'm slowing up, feeling my age. I'm not young anymore, Wilbur, but I don't want you to worry about that. Today is your big day. Look at my web. Doesn't it show up well with all of the dew in the, from the morning on it? Charlotte's web never looked more beautiful than it looked this morning. Each strand held dozens of bright drops of early morning dew. The light from the east struck it and made it as plain and as clear as you could see. It was a perfect piece of designing and building. In another hour or two, 
a steady stream of people would pass by, admiring it and reading it and looking at Wilbur, and they would marvel at the miracle. As Wilbur lay studying the web, a pair of whiskers and sharp teeth appeared. Slowly, Templeton dragged himself across the pen and threw himself down in the corner. He said, I'm back. What a night! The rat was swollen to twice his normal size. His stomach was as big as around as a jar of jelly. What a night, he said again. What feasting and what carousing. Ah, oh, it was wonderful. I must have eaten the remains of 30 lunches. Never have I ever seen anything so wonderful. Everything was well ripened and seasoned with the passage of time and the heat of the day. Oh, it was rich, my friends, it was rich. Charlotte said in disgust. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Templeton. It would serve you right if you had an acute attack of indigestion. He snarled. Don't worry about my stomach. It can handle anything. And by the way, I've got some bad news. As I came across that pig next door, you know, the one that calls himself Uncle, I noticed a huge blue tag on the front of his pen. That means he must have won first prize. I guess you are licked, Wilbur. You might as well relax. Nobody's going to hang any medal on you. And furthermore, I wouldn't be surprised if Zuckerman changes his mind about you. Wait till he gets a hankering for some fresh pork and smoked ham and crisp bacon. He'll take the knife to you, my boy. Charlotte snapped. Be still, Templeton. You're too stuffed and bloated to know what you're saying. Don't pay any attention to him, Wilbur. Wilbur tried not to think about what the rat had just said, and he decided to change the subject. Wilbur said, Templeton, if you weren't so dopey, you would have noticed that Charlotte has made an egg sac. She is going to be a mother. For your information, there are 514 eggs in that peachy little sack. Is it true? asked the rat. Yes, it's true, sighed Charlotte. Congratulations, murmured Templeton. This has been a night. He closed his eyes, pulled some straw up over him, and dropped off into a deep sleep. Wilbur and Charlotte would be glad. They were glad to get rid of him for a while. At nine o'clock that morning, the Arable's truck rolled into the fairgrounds and came to a stop at Wilbur's pen. Everybody climbed out. Look, cried Fern. Look at Charlotte's web. Look what it says. The grown-ups and the children joined hands and stood there studying the new sign. Humble said Mr. Zuckerman. Now isn't that just the perfect word for Wilbur? Everyone rejoiced to find that the miracle of the web had been repeated. Wilbur gazed up lovingly into their eyes. He looked very humble and very grateful. Fern winked at Charlotte. Lurvy soon got busy. He poured a bucket of warm sloths, slops into the trough while Wilbur ate his breakfast, and Lurvy scratched him gently with a smooth stick. Wait a minute, cried Avery. Look at this! And he pointed to the blue tag on Uncle's pen. This pig won first prize already! The Zuckermans and the Arables stared at the blue ribbon. Mrs. Zuckerman began to cry. Nobody said a word. They just stared at the blue ribbon. Then they stared at Uncle. Then they stared at the ribbon again. Lurvy took out an enormous handkerchief and blew his nose. Can I have some money? Asked Fern. I want to go over to the fair. 
You stay right where you are, said her mother, and tears came to Fern's eyes. What's everybody crying about? asked Mr. Zuckerman. Let's get busy. Edith, get the buttermilk. Mrs. Zuckerman wiped her eyes with her handkerchief. She went to the truck and came back with a gallon jar of buttermilk. Bath time, said the Zuckermans cheerfully. He and Mrs. Zuckerman and Avery climbed into Wilbur's pen. Avery slowly poured buttermilk on Wilbur's head and back, and as it trickled down his sides and cheek, Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman rubbed it into his skin and his hair. Then people stopped to watch. Pretty soon, a whole crowd had gathered around to watch Wilbur. Wilbur grew beautifully white and smooth. The morning sun was shining through his pink ears. He isn't as big as that pig next door, said somebody, but he's cleaner and that's what I like. So do I, said another man. He's humble too, said a woman and she was reading the sign in the web. Everybody who visited the pig pen had a good word to say about Wilbur. Everybody admired the web. And of course, nobody noticed Charlotte. Suddenly, a voice was heard over the loudspeaker. Attention, please. Will Mr. Homer Zuckerman bring his famous pig to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand? A special award will be made there in 20 minutes. Everybody is invited to attend. Crate your pig, please, Mr. Zuckerman, and report to the judge's booth promptly. For a moment after that announcement, the Arables and Zuckermans were unable to speak or move. Then Avery picked up a handful of straw and threw it high into the air. <laughs> and he gave out a loud yell. The straw fluttered down like confetti and fell into Fern's hair. Mr. Zuckerman hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Mr. Arable kissed Mrs. Arable. Avery kissed Wilbur, and everybody celebrated. Up overhead, in the shadows of the ceiling, Charlotte smiled as she held onto her ink sack. Her heart was not beating as strongly as usual, and she felt weary and old. But she was sure at last that she had saved Wilbur's life. And she felt peaceful and contented. We have no time to lose, shouted Mr. Zuckerman. Lurvy, help get the crate. Put that empty buttermilk jar back in the truck. Avery grabbed the jar and rushed to the truck. Now Templeton was asleep in the straw. He heard all this commotion and he woke up. He didn't know exactly what was going on, but when he saw the men shoving Wilbur into the crate, he made up his mind that he was going to go along. He watched his chance, and when no one was looking, he crept into the crate and buried himself again under the straw. All ready, boys, cried Mr. Zuckerman. Let's go. He, Mr. Arable, Lurvy, and Avery grabbed the crate and boosted it up over the side of the pen and into the back of the truck. Fern jumped in and sat on top of the crate. She still had straw in her hair and she looked pretty and excited. Mr. Arable started the truck and everybody climbed in and off they drove to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand. As they passed the Ferris wheel, Fern gazed up at it and wished she were on the top car with Henry Fussy by her side. That's the end of chapter 19. Chapter 20 is called The Hour of Triumph. Special announcement, said the loudspeaker. The, man the management of the fair takes great pleasure in presenting Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman and his famous pig. Will the crowd please make your way? Let the truck come through. Thank you. Wilbur trembled when he heard this. He felt happy, but dizzy. The truck crept slowly along in slow speed. Crowds of people surrounded it, and Mr. Arable had to be very careful as he was driving. At last, he managed to reach the judge's stand. Avery jumped out and lowered the tailgate of the truck. 
I'm scared to death, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Hundreds of people are looking at us. Cheer up, replied, replied Mrs. Arable. This is fun. The loudspeaker said, Unload your pig, please. Mr. Zuckerman said, All right, all together now, boys. Several men stepped forward and from the crowd to help lift the crate. Avery was the busiest helper of all. Mrs. Zuckerman said, Avery, tuck in your shirt and tighten your belt. Your pants are falling down. Can't you see I'm busy, Mom? said Avery. Look, yelled Fern, there's Henry. Her mother said, don't shout, Fern, and don't point. Fern asked, can I please have some money? Henry invited me to go on the Ferris wheel again, and I think he's out of money. Mrs. Arable opened her purse, and she said, here, here's 40 cents. Now don't get lost, Fern, and be back at our regular meeting place by the pig pen very soon. Fern raced off through the crowd searching for Henry. The Zuckerman pig is now being taken from his crate. Stand by for an announcement. Templeton crouched under the straw at the bottom of the crate. What a lot of nonsense, he mumbled. What a lot of fuss about nothing but a pig. Over in the pig pen, silent and alone, Charlotte rested. Her two front legs embraced her egg sack. Charlotte could hear everything that was being said on the loudspeaker. The words gave her courage. This was her hour of triumph. As Wilbur came out of the crate, the crowd clapped and cheered. Mr. Zuckerman took off his cap and took a bow. Lurvy pulled his big handkerchief from his pocket and wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Avery knelt in the dirt right next to Wilbur. He was petting him and showing off. Mrs. Zuckerman and Mrs. Arable stood by the truck. The loudspeaker again said, Ladies and gentlemen, we now present Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman's distinguished pig. The fame of this unique animal has spread to the far corners of the earth, attracting many valuable tours to our great state. Many of you will recall that never to be forgotten day last summer when the writing appeared mysteriously on the spider's web in Mr. Zuckerman's barn, calling the attention to the fact that the pig was completely out of the ordinary. This miracle has never been fully explained, but we simply know that we are dealing with supernatural forces here and we should all feel proud and grateful. In the words of the spider's web, Ladies and gentlemen, this is some pig. Wilbur blushed. He stood perfectly still and tried to look his best. The loudspeaker continued. This magnificent animal is truly terrific. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Note the smoothness and the whiteness of his coat. The, his spotless skin, the healthy pink glow of his ears and snout. Note the general radiance of this animal. Then remember the day that the word radiant appeared in the web. Ladies and gentlemen, I must not take any more of your valuable time. On behalf of the governors of the fair, I have the honor of giving a special prize of $25 to Mr. Zuckerman. Together, also, a handsome bronze medal in token of appreciation of the part played by this pig. This radiant, this terrific, this humble pig in attracting so many visitors to our great county fair. And the crowd cheered. Now, Wilbur had been feeling dizzier and dizzier through this long speech. When he heard the crowd begin to cheer and clap again, he suddenly fainted away. <laughs> his legs collapsed, his mind went blank, and he fell to the ground. What's wrong? asked the loudspeaker. What's going on, Zuckerman? What's the trouble with your pig? Avery was kneeling by Wilbur's head, 
petting him. Mr. Zuckerman was dancing about, fanning him with his cap. He's all right, cried Mr. Zuckerman. He gets these spells. He gets nervous and he can't stand praise. The loudspeaker said, well, we can't give a prize to a dead pig. That's never been done. He isn't dead, hollered Mr. Zuckerman. He fainted. He gets embarrassed easily. Larvy, run, go get some water. Larvy sprang from the judge's ring and disappeared. Templeton poked his head out from the straw. He noticed that the end of Wilbur's tail was within his reach. Templeton grinned and he chuckled. He said to himself, I'll tend to this. He took Wilbur's tail in his mouth and bit down just as hard as he could bite. The pain revived Wilbur. In a flash, he was back up on his feet and he screamed, ouch! Hooray, <laughs> yelled the crowd. He's up, the pig's up. Good work, Mr. Zuckerman. That is some pig. Everyone was delighted. Mr. Zuckerman was the most pleased of all. Whew, he sighed with relief. Nobody had seen Templeton. The rat had done his work very well. And now one of the judges climbed into the ring with the prizes. He handed Mr. Zuckerman two $10 bills and a $5 bill. Then he shook hands with Mr. Zuckerman and Wilbur blushed. Avery put out his hand and shook hands with the judges too. The crowd cheered and a photographer took Wilbur's picture. A great feeling of happiness swept over the Zuckermans and the Arables. This was the greatest moment in Mr. Zuckerman's life. It is deeply satisfying to win a prize in front of a lot of people. As Wilbur was being shoved back into the crate, Lurvy came charging through the crowd carrying a pail of water. Without hesitating a second, he threw the water at Wilbur. But in his excitement, he missed and the water splashed all over Mr. Zuckerman and Avery and they got soaking wet. Oh, for goodness sakes, yelled Mr. Zuckerman. What are you doing, Lurvy? Can't you see the pig is all right? Lurvy said, but, but you asked for water. I didn't ask for a shower, said Mr. Zuckerman. And the crowd roared with laughter. Finally, Mr. Zuckerman had to laugh too. And of course, Avery was tickled to find himself so wet and he immediately started to act like a clown. He pretended he was taking a shower and he made faces and danced around and rubbed imaginary soap under his armpits. Then he dried himself off with an imaginary towel. Avery, stop it, said his mother. Stop showing off. But the crowd loved it. Avery heard nothing but the applause. He liked being a clown in a ring with everybody watching. When he discovered there was still a little bit of water left in the bottom of the pail, he raised up the pail and dumped the water all over the top of his head and made silly faces again. The children in the crowd screamed with appreciation. At last, things calmed down. Wilbur was loaded into the truck. Avery was led from the ring by his mother and placed on the seat of the truck to dry off. The truck, driven by Mr. Arable, crawled slowly back to the pig pen. And that's the end of chapter 20.